Uh, and welcome to logo. Uh, another Smash Live. Um, we're having some technical problems, as always. Um, thank you for joining no, us. Today. Um, Joe Dale um, can see us and he can talk and we can see him, um, but um, he mm -hmm. uh, can't actually hear us, um, which is great. Um, but we've got Richard uh, Wells joining us um, and he can hear and see and everything. He's got all of his senses intact. Um, oh, and uh, we've got a few other people looking to uh, join us. Um, Joe's having a little bit of a mare. Um, maybe we should see if we can stop grumbling. You can't. <laughs> looking now, Joe. <laughs> okay then. Um, so, uh, Richard, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, my name you. is Richard Wells. Um, you can hear me now, can't you? Um, I'm from New Zealand. I used to live in the UK. Uh, I'm a head of technology in a secondary school, um, and I tweet a lot and I blog a lot on iPadforSchools.org. And uh, here I am, um, about to do my little simple app smash about art and reflection. So uh, looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay, Joe. Over to you, Joe. Uh, right, hi everyone. This is going to be very interesting because I can't actually hear anything at all, but hopefully everyone can hear me okay. So uh, thank you for inviting me along, <laughs> Mark, and uh, and lovely to see you again, Richard. I uh, hope it's not too late for you. Um, so yeah, very much looking forward to my second App Smash Live, and I know it's the third one in the series. I think this is a really fantastic opportunity for people uh, to uh, share their expertise. So thank you ever so much for inviting me along, Mark, and um, Happy New Year for everyone. Uh, for 2015. Brilliant, thank you, Joe. Um, and yeah, my name's Mark Anderson. Um, I tweet ICT Evangelist, ICT Evangelist, or ICT. Um, I'm an assistant head teacher at a school um, just outside Bristol. Uh, I continue to work with lots of technology, and um, yeah, I just like to sort of think about how we can um, enhance and um, sort of add um, something extra to learning through the use of technology. And that's something that I'm really passionate about. Um, I've written a book and a few iBooks, well, a few books on the iBooks store, should I say. Um, and um, I'll, I'll let Richard explain uh, what app smashing is, um, seeing as he's uh, such a, a fine purveyor of them. Uh, Richard, do you want to um, explain to people that are watching what an app smash actually is? Well, for me, app smashing started when I had too many students only using Keynote. Um, and there are other the teachers around the school that were happy with PowerPoint, and they had all their kids quite happily using Keynote, and it was the only thing my, the kids were mastering. So, so I heard this phrase in the US, and, and app smashing um, is all about trying to challenge the kids to do more with the device um, and, and appreciate that. Um, you can go to deeper levels and, and, and you can do more, far more interesting things by taking a product from one app, um, normally feeding it through something like the camera roll to another app, which can then add a, a layer of extra features. So you're making far more interactive uh, products um, and, and publishing those interactive products around the class or around the world is, is a lot more fun than your standard um, sort of 2D presentation type thing. So, uh, so yeah, it's more challenging and more interesting for everyone, really. Cool. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, and um, as soon as you've got the camera, would like to go through your uh, your app smashing share with us. Yeah. Okay. I'll um, screen share my uh, my pretty little slides. So you can now hear. You can now see my slides. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I'm actually uh, although I'm a, I'm a techie person, and I used to be a Microsoft engineer. I, uh, I've actually done a fine art degree. That's, uh, that's where my initial specialism was. So I've always got a sort of an inkling um, or an angle towards art. And um, one of the things I did on my degree was look at the fact that, um, in a lot of ways, the process uh, is more important than the final product. Uh, a bit like any learning, you know, it's the journey that you go on. Uh, more than the more than the destination. So uh, what I thought I'd look at is I'd, I'd I'd look at ways that we can use technology to not only record the process, but um, but to to be able to review it and reflect on it, um, because it's the, that's where the real learning takes place. Um, 
I was very lucky in July, I went to um, Paris with my family. Uh, we were around the UK first, and um, we saw the Mona Lisa, and uh, my daughters had a lot of questions, because um, they, they do like art, and, and but um, a lot of the questions were about how do you do a painting like that, and, 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 and what, what does somebody go through? And so now we have the technology to, uh, to record that kind of thing. So I um, started looking at ways of recording um, art in the classroom, uh, and even art with my daughters. And of course, the obvious um, thing that you first think of is, is filming it. So you, you set up a camera, and this is, <laughs> this is my daughter setting up two drums and an and a iPad on top, and you start filming. And the problem with filming and art as a, as a mixture is that, is that um, art is time consuming and you might take 10 minutes, you could take half an hour, an hour or days maybe over a, uh, a piece of artwork. So you need something that um, allows you to review the process and what you've been through to create that piece of artwork but without this, this need for hours and hours of filming. So what I've done is I've come up with this um, app smash where you, as you do your art, you use an app called iMotion, or uh, there are, there's a few stop frame animation apps. The one I use is iMotion, and it, um, it auto takes a photo every second or two seconds, um, or even five or ten seconds, uh, and allows you to record a lengthy process. So um, that will then export all of that into a, a video, uh, which will go to photos or the camera roll, and then I'm going to use this uh, this fourth stage, which is to do with the fact that one of the problems with using video in the classroom is that um, accessing those videos over a longer term, over over the year, is is a little bit more difficult. You've got to organise links. You've got to organise um, people to be on computers, on devices, um, on the right web page, and everything like that. So. So I've been using um, augmented reality, which is a sense of holding up your device to real life and having that real life um, add an extra layer of information onto the screen just because it's looking at that real life. And I realized that that could apply to art. So hopefully this video will play. Um, this is my daughter, and I'll have to check with uh, Mark if he still has his microphone on, yeah. uh, if this is playing. But I'm going to press play on this video, and you'll see my daughter here. Now, this the camera is taking a photo every second as she does her uh, as she does her artwork. Is that? Can you see that video playing? Yeah. Yeah. So, so she can now go on for a good half an hour, and 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 it will be condensed into a very very short video that she can find she finds quite entertaining to watch to to review what she did and and how she did how she did things. So. Um, so definitely stop frames. The, the, my first thought was to record it as a video and speed the video up, but of course that still requires you to record the uh, the entire process in real time. So stop frame is definitely the way to go forward. And there she is with her hand. Um, I've got some tips at the end of this slideshow about sticking everything down so nothing moves. Because, um, but there you go. So, oh, here we go. It's got a Go to the next slide. Okay, so this is um, the next video. Is where what I've now done is I've moved the resulting video of that stop frame animation through the camera roll into this app called Orasma, and Orasma allows me to to take a photo basically of the finished artwork and use that artwork to trigger the video on the iPad screen. Um, on to overlay it on top of the actual artwork. So the artwork comes back to life and you watch that piece of artwork being created in its place. I'm hoping this works because it's a, a nice little video. And you can see here, there's her original artwork and here I am holding the iPad up where it, after a second it recognizes that unique piece of artwork and you see her hands come in on the screen and even as I move the iPad, you can see her hands working away, and she can actually look at that iPad and review how she did that piece of artwork directly from the piece of artwork itself. And of course, this um, 
this can store all of her artwork on the app, meaning that she can walk around the classroom, she can walk around the bedroom, and trigger off all the videos just by holding the iPad up to the artwork. So you get a lovely way of uh, recording and reflecting. Um, so because it's um, it's not the easiest process, it doesn't take very long, but it, it takes a couple of practices. Um, I have a help sheet for uh, for the process on my blog of how you get a video, set up a, a trigger poster, in this case it's the piece of artwork, and then you set your video up to play on top of that artwork on the screen. Um, and here are some of the tips. Here we go. So we stick the paper to the table or the floor. It's very important that everything stays still to make the uh, stop frame really uh, really clean and work really well. And there, there are, un unlike my uh, drums here, there are some uh, official iPad stands you can buy on the market. Um, great for, um, I've got some people in my department who are graphics teachers and drawing teachers, so they use those iPad stands quite a bit. Um, it's really good fun with paint. It's much more uh, tactile than pencils. Pencils, I found, on a few of them didn't uh, work so well because of the lightness. The Erasma needs a really definite picture it can recognize. And um, and that's about it, I think. Um, but that was my app smash. It's uh, bringing art back to life and allowing the kids to reflect on the process. There you go. I'll leave it on that one. Okay. That's, that's really cool. What I really like about it is um, the fact that you're sort of mixing um, sort of the digital and the analog and really bringing something extra to the sort of analog process of the learning and, and the practice that your, your daughter's doing. I think it's really, yeah. really, really, really good. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's really adding something, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, well, it just means that all that artwork around the room can really be interactive and, and really, you know, remind and reflect the kid, on the kids and what they did and and it's, uh, yeah, it really brings the classroom to, to life, uh, in any kind of art classroom or any art classroom. Um, I'm just going to do one little extra thing here. I'm just going to, just for, just for 30 seconds, um, I hopefully, can you see my iPad screen? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm hoping, um, here we go. Uh, I'm not sure if it's come live. I knew this might happen. So you can see me, and now you can see my iPad screen, hopefully. Yeah. Okay, so I just thought I'd give this a try. I'm not promising anything because it, we're on a, we're on Google Hangout, and also my uh, screen share is doing a strange thing. But can you see the picture on the um yeah. the wall there? Mm. Uh -huh. So if I get this right, so hopefully you can see this and I get this to register. You can actually see it register, and you'll see it. There's there's my daughter's hands. I'm hoping you can see yeah. that. Yeah. And you can see that I can pull away from the wall there, and it really is live on the wall. The video perfectly matching the original drawing, and and um, and you can see her hands drawing away there. So it really brings her bedroom to life, and it brings all the classrooms to life as well. So there you go. That's brilliant. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm just trying yeah, to. Thanks for that. There you go. <laughs> That's me then. Um, da -da 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 -da. No, where am I? Okay, that's that's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, some students, um, not of mine, but um, I, I did work in with some colleagues um, in, in a previous school I worked in, um, did something a little bit similar, um, whereby um, the students would do their artwork. And then they turn their piece of artwork um, into in aura using Orasma. But the um, the image that came up wasn't um, them creating their image. It was a student explaining um, sort of thought processes behind the, the, the artwork that they were doing, um, and yeah. then explaining you know, who the influences were and all that sort of thing. So um, when there was a, 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 um, a an exhibition of their work, people would go around. Um, parents were given iPads um, which had the um, or Orasma channel already added and what have you. Uh, so they could go around and, and view the exhibition, but look at the students talking uh, about their work as they went around. So they could hold their iPad up and, and um, view the artwork, but then also hear the students explaining, you know, what the work was about, why they, yeah. did, they did it, so forth and so on. Um, which I thought was a really cool way and a really good way of the students uh, sort of extending and, and their 
understanding of the work they were doing and, and what have you. Um, yeah, yeah, I thought that was uh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, really good. Yours yeah, is really good. Really good. I love the, the whole, like I said, the whole analog and digital thing there together. You know, really yeah. cool. Um, we, we, we've got um, Jenny Ashby with us. Uh, Jenny, hiya. Hi, Jenny. Uh, how are you? Can Very you hear good. me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Oh, great. And uh, Joe, Joe's not. Um, Joe is here, um, but you can't. Yes. You can't hear us at all. Um, but um, if Joe waves, I don't know if Joe's looking. <laughs> <laughs> he can't hear. No, you can't hear her. No, he's, he's still there, mate. Okay. Um, oh. right, so, he's um, so close, is he? <clears throat> now he's just there with himself. Okay, <laughs> um, oh. um, I'll just send Joe a message um, and uh, ask him if he wants to go up next. Yeah. Yeah, to answer your question, Jenny, on the chat, um, you asked about um, can Erasmus connecting or not. Um, um, in the in the short term, uh, I find that because the kids are are recording and reflecting on their own artwork, um, yes, it's, it's, it can actually because if they use their own Erasmus app, it's stored locally, so yes. so they can actually have all their own reflections without the requirement for an internet connection. So. Uh, Okay, but if so other they, people wanted to see it, they couldn't come up with their device and if, see it. Yeah, you can. You can. You can. Um, you can publicise the, the, your your channel, your, um, and and yeah. so. So yes, it can be made public, and it can be made. People can subscribe and then go go around all your artwork. Um, like Mark mm -hmm. said, I, I also used it for um, for kids reporting back on their um, hopscotch coding app stuff as, as well. So yeah, coding yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So are we going to Joe now? Okay. <laughs> okay, the time has come. Right, okay, hopefully this is going to work. I'm having an absolute mare today, but never mind. Um, I can't even work out how to get my uh, logo up on the screen. So for those people that don't know me, I'm Joe Dale. And um, I'm going to, I was trying to convert my PPT into a Google slide, and that would uh, work either. So I'm going to share my iPad screen using Air Server. Uh, I'm going to run it from Keynote. So I had it in Google Drive. I turned it from a PowerPoint into a Keynote, and, and we should um, be up and running. So all I need to do now, I presume, is click Screen Share, and then click this one. And then I'm hoping uh, you can see that's OK. Let me just. Um, let me just check from the chat. Can you just let me know if you can see this, okay? I, I can see that you've got you. Okay, brilliant. Okay, I can see your thumb is up, Mark. Therefore, I'm good to go. Right. So let's go for it. So, uh, so what I think um, I'll talk about today is uh, video in video app smashing. Now, there's a few uh, tips and tricks in here which um, hopefully nobody's heard of uh, of, of before, and. Um, and uh, I was up till half twelve last night getting this all sorted. So I'm glad that uh, it's all. It, it should be working now okay, so let's get on with it. So those people that don't know me, um, I was a languages teacher for 13 years. I'm now an independent languages consultant going around the world uh, doing lots of interesting work, particularly to do with iPads. And here are some ideas on how you can uh, use video in video uh, in in, uh, in app smashing using a couple of apps, which I'll explain in a moment. So uh, my blog address is there, joe.typepad.com, which uh, you've... Uh, uh, which um, I'm not updated for a while, but never mind. Uh, there's still some lots of interesting stuff on there. My email address is joedell at talk21.com. So the apps we're going to have a look at, uh, have a look at today is uh, uh, Cool Finger Face, Documents Fire, Twitch Kids, iMovie, Screen Chomp, and Google Drive. And as I did it in the other app smash that I did um, uh, earlier on this year, I put QR codes next to each one. So all you need to do is scan the QR code and you'll be able to see the, um, uh, the, it'll take you straight to the app store, you'll be able to see the app uh, there and then, so it should be very, very easy. And um, everything I'm showing you today is free, apart from iMovie, unless you buy a new iPad, and therefore it is free, but everything else is free. Uh, what I'm going to be showing you, you could produce something similar and explain everything, but as I explain everything, it's not free. I thought that would be quite a nice thing to, uh, to show everyone. So let's make a start. So what we're going to do, first of all, so we're going to use Cool Finger Faces, 
um, and we're going to uh, take a picture of a uh, of one finger. You could have multiple fingers, and you could use an app like Yakit Kids in order to uh, make their their their, their faces uh, come alive. But I'm not going to use that today. I'm going to use Chatterbix Kid uh, instead. And I had an interesting situation yesterday where, whereby I was trying to take a picture of my finger while holding while holding the iPad. Um, and yes, yeah, so I had one obviously the finger on the, on the on the floor, whatever, taking the picture with the um, the iPad and trying to do that so that worked. So that was quite interesting. So I used an app called KeyCam, which gave me a five second countdown before it actually took the picture automatically. So that's how you get around that if that's an issue, unless you have a, a friend that can take a picture for you. So I use KeyCam first of all to take a picture of my finger, as you do. And as you can see there in the camera roll on the right hand side, there is the picture. Uh, so I chose the picture of my finger, fascinating stuff, and uh, and then on the right hand side there I, you can see that I chose a, um, a face, you'll see that I put red arrows on there to make this nice and easy for everyone, so I chose a face I wanted to add onto the fingernail, and this is what it looks like. So I then uh, pinched the face so it fitted nicely over the nail, and I tapped save, and then I saved the um, the picture with the, the eyes and the nose on it uh, to my camera roll. Right, then um, having got it into the camera roll, this is one of the key things about app smashing is using the camera roll as, as a way of pushing and pulling content into apps and away from apps. Uh, so I opened Chatterbits Kids and tapped Take Photo and then selected the uh, image from my camera roll. And then having done that, um, I drew a mouth. It, actually, where the mouth is on that picture, that's just from the, sort of the, um, the demo, as it were. The actual mouth I put on is lower. So I tapped on the microphone button and I drew a mouth um, underneath where the nose was, and then I spoke for 30 seconds describing the app smashing process that I was going through uh, to create this app smash. And as you can see there, I'm on 27 seconds. Okay, uh, I then uh, pressed uh, stop and pressed next uh, to see that it worked, and you can see that I, um, I'm playing back the, the video there, and that's why the mouth is moving, and doesn't that look lovely? I turned my finger into a uh, speaking character. Uh, I could have added uh, different filters onto the uh, the finger if or onto the picture if I'd wanted to, and I could have added text as well if I'd wanted to, but I didn't do that. I just tapped on next. Uh, I then tapped on the uh, save to camera roll option, so I exported the uh, the video that I just created to the camera roll, and when I'd finished, I got the message saying export was complete. Okay, then uh, I um, forgot about uh, the, uh, the the video that I've made, and I went to make another video in Screen Chomp. Now, I, as I've said already, I could have done this in Explain Everything, but Screen Chomp is free, and there's a there's a, there's a method I'm going to show you in a second how you can download Screen Chomp videos to your camera roll, which I think is quite cool because I think it's a free app. So I selected the pen uh, black, and I pressed record, and then I had a countdown of three seconds. And then I wrote the words uh, app smash live uh, exclamation mark with a little squiggle underneath. Then I pressed stop, and that uh, then took me to um, uploading it, or, get, or playing it back, should I say, and then getting ready to upload it. So then I tapped on share, and I watched the, uh, the video playback a la Harry Potter. And then having pressed share, uh, it uploads automatically to the Scream Chomp uh, servers, uh, and I got the message, your share was successful. I then tapped on the... Uh, the option there, which is the second arrow, where it's got a little blue dot on the left-hand side there, and that was able to play the um, the video that I created uh, in in uh, in Screen Chomp. Uh, having done that, I then tapped Open in Safari, and there is the uh, the video in Safari. Now, if I'd wanted to, I could have turned that link in the address bar into a QR code, and I could have made a wall display, so I had lots of different. Uh, Screen Chomp uh, videos, uh, which were linked via QR codes. But I didn't want to do that. That was far too easy. Now, this is something that you might not know in Screen Chomp. If you, uh, once you've got it to this point, or actually on the previous slide, it will work as well. If you push your finger upwards, you'll see that there's a link underneath, like this. And if you hold your finger down on the download link, um, you can tap copy. So the first download link, not the second one. The first download link, you hold your finger down on it, and then you tap copy. So you've copied the link. Then you can go to the app called Documents 5, uh, launch that, tap on Browser, and having tapped on Browser, you can paste in the link into the address bar and press Go. 
Having done that, uh, it will automatically recognize it's an MP4 file that's come up. This would work with MP3 or other video, or other other formats, but it recognizes it's an MP4 file, and then you tap Done, and what happens is it will then download into uh, Documents 5. So you'll see the message, um, the screen chomp has been downloaded. You tap on the three um, horizontal lines on the left-hand side. Uh, you tap on the Documents uh, option, and you tap on Downloads. And then having tapped on Downloads, uh, you tap on the Edit uh, option on the right-hand side. Uh, having done that, you then uh, uh, put a, a tick in the little um, radio button to the left of the screen chomp that you just created. As you can see, it says 22.35. You can see what time I was doing this last night. And then you tap on the Move option or the Copy option, depending on what if you want to cut or paste it. So you tap on, uh, I, in this case, I tapped on Move. Um, I then tapped on the Documents uh, option to the left of Downloads, as you can see there where the arrow is. And I then tapped on Photos, and that's allowing you to save um, something that you've downloaded in Documents 5 to your camera roll, which I think is quite cool. I used to use, I used to drag, uh, before I used to drag the file onto um, Google Drive, which you can have automatically um, uh, uh, enabled in Documents 5, and then save it to my camera roll that way, or via Dropbox as well, but actually you can do it this way, it's, it's simpler. So you can uh, tap on Photos, then tap uh, Move, like that, okay, and then uh, then it saves it to the camera roll. So now I've got my both my videos, my screen chomp video and my um, Chatterpix video uh, as well in my camera roll. So then I open up iMovie, of course, and I tap on Movie, and I tap Create Movie, um, and then I tap on the uh, the AppSmash Live uh, screen chomp video first of all. Tap on the arrow to, um, downwards, and as you all know, it drops into the timeline like this. Now you'll see at the moment it's 14.8 seconds, which is important later on. But then I tap on the second clip, um, or the first clip, should I say that I made the Chatterbits Kids one. But instead of tapping on the dot, uh, on the arrow pointing downwards, I tap on the three dots on the right hand side, and I choose the video in video option. So having done that, um, you'll notice that the uh, that it's dropped now on the timeline just above the um, the first clip that I added. So then I hold my finger down on that second that little um, one where the arrow is, and I drag it across uh, to the left so it fits the same length as the um, as the video below, as you can see uh, right there. Okay. Uh, then what I do. Is I uh, as, and you can see as well the video little thumbnail has appeared on the um, uh, on the white background. I then tap on that sort of four-headed arrow uh, icon on the right-hand side where the arrow is, and that allows me to move the um, the icon the the, uh, the video thumbnail around on the, on the screen. Now I when I drew oh when I drew the um, uh, when I drew the the app smash live. Um, uh, writing onto the screen. I wanted to make sure there was enough space for the video to fit that I was going to add later on on the left hand side. Uh, and there we are. So that's how I've done that. And then what I did was I tapped on the, um, the in the timeline, I tapped on the second, uh, the, the, the clip with the uh, Chatterbits kid. And you'll see where the arrow is that the audio is muted. And I want to turn that audio on because that's the audio that I've recorded uh, describing what I'm doing. So I've done, I've done that. I've then uh, unmuted the audio. As you can see, the second arrow there uh, means it's unmuted now. So I can now hear my own voice uh, that I recorded with the Chatterpix. And you'll also notice that I have muted the audio for the screen chomp. So now I've got the, the balance of audio uh, right. OK. Now, I mentioned earlier that it was 14.8 seconds was the length of the screen chomp. But my video clip, my Chatterbix um, video clip, is 30 seconds. So what I did was I tapped on the video option on the left-hand side there and tapped on speed, and then I chose to reduce the speed um, to um, half time. In other words, it would be the same length as my video, and it would have this nice sort of slowed down um, effect when playing the video back. Uh, so as you can see there, it's now saying 29.6 seconds at the top as opposed to 14 point whatever it was. So then I tap on the arrow on the left hand side and I'm ready to export it. I give it a name at Smash Live. I tap on the export option uh, and I tap save video. 
and then I go into Google Drive. Now this is again, this is a tip which you may not know about. Hopefully not, um, guys. Anyway, that's my plan. So then you tap on the plus sign in Google Drive. So I've got my video clip now, my composite video clip in my camera roll. I tap on the plus sign and I tap upload photos or videos. Uh, I tap on camera roll and I upload my video clip. Now you have to wait about a minute or so for the thumbnail to appear on the left hand side otherwise it's just grey if I remember correctly. So I waited a minute or so then I tapped on the little eye icon on the right hand side as you can see with the arrow there. Uh, I moved my finger upwards so I could see the link sharing is off option and I tapped on that to turn to uh, turn the link sharing to on. Now I have found that in some schools when I've demonstrated this for some reason even if people try to tap turn on it will not turn on. I've never had a problem myself but that's what um, I've seen in some schools and I haven't worked out why that is if it's some sort of whole school um, filtering thing or whatever but anyway it, it works it works fine with me so I tap turn on um, and then as you can see there you get the message saying link sharing is on if you if you um, have done this already and you want to, go, want to go back to this to turn the link sharing to on um, you can do that again but you can just tap the get link um, icon as well as you can see to get the link copied to the clipboard then having done that I've just pasted the link into um, Safari and that means essentially what's happening is the reason I've shown you how to do this is because it means that I can then watch the video being uh, hosted privately in Google Drive without me having to upload it onto YouTube which I think is a pretty cool thing uh, to say the least so I can just press play now I can watch the video and then I can turn that into a QR code I can then save that QR code to my camera roll uh, export it put it onto a wall display and I can have video clips which are being launched by just scanning the QR code and pressing play and that's it so that's a that's another alternative as opposed to using YouTube and having a private link as it were and I just wanted to, to just to finish off with if you scan that actually now then it will, it will it, you can see the video um, if you go to the web version of uh, drive uh, you'll see that you can download the um, the video clip uh, by tapping on the download option now if you want to disable that if you tap on the eye icon on the right hand side you'll notice it says download permission and you can put a tick in that little box to stop people downloading so, I mean I'm sure there's a, be a way of getting around that but anyway if you do that it should help to stop people downloading um, the clip if that's what you want to do. Um, in, in the iPad version there is no download option but I know people that have scanned it using an Android, uh, the Android version you can download it so if you want to disable that then just tap on the little tick. And I also wanted to say that if you wanted to as well you could have a look at this um, amazing blog post by Greg Kulowick who I'm sure we all know. Um, about a video writing app hack and what he did he was bored one day at a, an airport in Cincinnati I think it was and so he used uh, um, explain everything with a green screen and he was able to produce this effect so you could have this effect as a background as opposed to screen chomp so you could have a little video thumbnail like a talking head talking over the top with um, a moving image in the background which he actually sped up using the hyperlapse video and then he wrote over the top um, with explain everything so that's another idea um, that you could you could augment what I did but I thought with 50 slides that was plenty for today but if you scan that QR code that will actually take you to the blog post and you'll be able to see um, what he did and so that will be another way of augmenting further, app smashing further the idea that, that I put together <coughs> here <coughs> and oh, that's what, I, that's what I wanted to say so hopefully you'll be able to hear that okay unfortunately I can't hear what you're saying but um, I look forward to to the feedback about that and I, see, I can see I've got a thumbs up from, from you guys so that's really good so hopefully you enjoy that. There's a few tips and tricks there which I've not uh, shown anyone uh, before in a video format so um, hopefully it was, yeah I wanted to show you my best stuff in the App Smash Live so there you go, thanks for listening. Brilliant, thank you very much Joe. Uh, I think you get the uh, award for the uh, most efforts in preparing your presentation in different slides. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'll um, just say I, I'm going to try and um, do something which focuses a bit on creativity. Um, recently, um, here in the UK, there's been a, um, a lot of um, UK education bloggers blogging uh, um, on a hashtag called Nurture1415. This was um, something which started three years ago where teachers have just been reflecting on things that have been happening in the previous year and writing some sort of thoughts and wishes uh, for things. Um, that they'd like to do in, in the forthcoming year. And uh, I've been creating some posters, get, taking some quotes from the various blog posts. I'm up to about 70 of them so far. 
Um, but loads of people have been asking me about how I've done them, and I've done them in a, in a bit of an app smash kind of way, using multiple apps to create something quite creative, uh, quite nice, uh, and what have you. So I thought I'd share some of the things, uh, some of the tools, some of the apps that I've been using in combination with each other to create some quite nice um, pieces of artwork. Uh, I say artwork, it's not anything like as good as um, Josie's work, obviously, but um, I've, um, I, I thought I'd share some of that. So um, if I turn my screen sharing on, uh, we should see um, my uh, iPhone. Now these are obviously uh, apps that will work on, um, uh, on, on an iPad as well, and lots of these are available on um, other devices too. Uh, just a quick check from uh, Jenny and Richard. Can you see that my phone okay? Is that coming through? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Um, so um, the app that I've used most really is the Rona Design app that you can see at the top in the centre there. Um, if I flip through, <clears throat> there's a few, quite a few apps that I use uh, when it comes to working with images. Um, not all of them are free. Um, and interestingly, okay. Richard, this, this brushes app in the top of hand side. Have you, have you seen that app before, Richard? Sorry. Brushes, did you say? Yeah, have you seen brushes before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. my mum's an artist, so she uses that one quite a lot. Yeah. See, um, li linking into what you said, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a bit different. Um, but um, when you finish making your piece of artwork with brushes, um, you can play back what you've made afterwards. Mm. Um, yeah. You can see the process of actually making it, which you know, I really like about that app. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll run through some of these. Uh, I like the, the one in the bottom right-hand corner is called um, uh, Photosphere. Um, it's a Google app. Uh, it's free, and it enables you to create massive sort of 360-degree um, view images of where you're at, um, which is yeah. really really nice. Um, yeah. The Typo Pick app, uh, sorry, Type Pick and Typo Pick app enables you to sort of create nice writing across your screen and colour picker and colour view are quite good for um, getting actual um, hex code to colours if you want to try and get a particular colour um, to use in a piece of artwork. Uh, that's um, th Those were free as well. Um, also, um, we've got um, these apps here. Quipio uh, should really be on the front page, a great uh, free app. Um, uh, but these, these are all really nice. But I'm going to um, I'm gonna run through a live version of, of making one of these pieces of artwork. So, um, what I'm going to start with is um, I'm going to use this app here in the middle called Lens Flare. And if you don't know what a lens flare is, if you imagine when you're looking at the sun, it's sort of bright at you. And when you look at it with, with your eyes, I'm, I'm looking to the sun right now, and um, you get like a, a little um, kind of um, optical effect, uh, and you can recreate that using software. So if I just go to um, photos, I'll just pull through um, a photo from my camera roll. Okay, so there it is. Great. I'm not going to crop it at all. I'm just going to tap done, and I'm going to go to um, effects, and I'm going to choose um, a spherical lens, and it's just going to be an electron hex like that. So by moving that across there, I get a nice kind of um, effect across my my image there, which is just nice. Um, so once I've done that, I can just um, save that uh, straight through um, save image. And I'm now able to access that image on my camera roll. So let's say now um, I wanted to um, just create some nice other effects. When it repicks, um, is a really nice uh, app. So I just load up uh, that image that I've just edited uh, with the lens flare on it. Uh, there it is. Now I could, um, with some of these pens on the bottom, um, add some nice little uh, rain drip effects over the top of it. If you can see those uh, coming across the front now, so it looks like there's some rain there. Um, you can do uh, all manner of different things with it. So you can add some dandelions across it, or you can add um, some magic dust. And what I mean to get a sort of more, a more magical uh, feel, which is really nice. And you can also um, add some lovely borders and things. Um, let's say I'll go to here and I'll choose a like, wood uh, border for the edge of my image. Let's change the edge there a little bit. Okay, and um, I also want to um, just put a little vignette uh, around the outside there, so that brings in the depth of it a little bit more. Fantastic, so that's Repix. Save that through the camera roll again. Awesome stuff. And so, so far we've used Lens Flare, we've used Repix, um, and now I'm just going to go through into uh, Rona Design. So I'll load that one up. And in here, um, I can just pull that image through from my camera roll, camera, and there it is, load it up. 
and I can um, you know, move it around and crop it out if I want to, and so forth and so on. I'll take out the bit of the the top corner bit up here. I'll take that bit out. Okay. Um, actually, I've got the wrong image there, haven't I? Let me just go back through. That's the one there. That's the perfect. Brilliant. Uh, you can get different sizes down the bottom here. You can see I'm scrolling through. You can choose different uh, sizes for your image, but I'm just going to stick with what I've got. Crop that. Add your text. Uh, so just tap on the T at the top and just go through. Double tap to edit. Uh, B the change. You want. So a quote there. Put it where you want it, like so. And again, there's loads of fonts in here that you can choose from. I quite like this one. You can change the colour and things like that as well. It comes with loads of little um, designs as well that you can use. And Insta Beauty, Insta Celebrations, Insta this, Insta that. Um, there's loads of nice ones there. Uh, I'll just go to Insta Doodle for now, and I'll just add in a little light bulb over there, and then a little bit more text just to pop the reference in down the bottom there. Anyone recognise the quotes? Hmm. I might be wrong. Quick or Google it. Yeah, Google it. See if I can see. <laughs> I may have it wrong. There we go. And I'll just um, change the font again to keep it consistent. And I'll pop that over here, I think. And then you just save it out. Save image. And you know, I, I really, really, really like um, using multiple apps to create yeah. something, um, which is a, a little bit more than what you first started with. And I say um, some staples really. Um, the Runner design is amazing. Repix is really cool. Uh, Waterlog is really nice as well. So um, if I just go through to here, I'll load up that original image from my photo library. Uh, and what it will do is it will convert your um, image uh, into a painting. So if you watch it, and it will just paint it for you. And you end up with a really nice sort of watercolour version uh, of what you originally made. And you can, again, just do whatever you want to do with that, which is really nice. Uh, Word photo, um, you can put keywords in there. It's a bit like uh, Wordle um, on speed, really. Um, many people like that. Um, Diptych and Moldiv. Moldiv's free. Moldiv is, is probably one of my most used apps. It's brilliant uh, for um, creating um, montages. Um, and, and, and what have you using different layouts? You can see the different layouts that are here. Um, absolutely brilliant. Um, if I um, really want to go to town, no, I use Diptych. Um, Diptych is uh, a paid-for app, though. Um, but you've got lots, lots, lots more um, layouts for combining your images and, and what have you in there. Um, it's really, really nice, and, and you can move the borders around far easier in Diptych than you can uh, within Moldiv. Snapseed, another Google app, is really, really powerful. Um, so if I bring in an image here, for example, from the library, let's go for those vegetables. Um, just take the vegetables there. I'll use that. And then uh, I'll give it some drama. Because that's what we need with vegetables, is some drama. Or some meat to go with it. Uh, you can um, do things like change the center focus. You can um, change um, the outer brightness and bring it down so you can get a, a vignette effect and you bring those things down like so. And loads of nice things that you can do uh, in Snapseed. You can change the focus, you can put frames around the edge, so forth and so on. That's a free app. Um, and um, Over is really good for annotating, app, uh, annotating, annotating images and what have you as well. Um, but really, with all these different apps, 
Um, the, the, the nice thing with all of them really is, is that you can be really, really creative. So you can take something that you've taken, you know, photo you've taken uh, originally yourself, and you can turn it into something far, far more than it originally was. Um, which is what I, I believe the idea of app smashing is really, you know, um, using a combination of apps uh, to produce something more than it was uh, in, in its original state. Um, so hopefully um, you've enjoyed my little demonstration on some of the um, creative um, image editing apps that I've got, and that's kind of me done. Thanks. So I'm back. Ha ha. Yeah, what a mark of amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's just sort of like Jenny said in the comments, it, it adds value to what you've got what you've got in the first place, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's good. It gets all about layers, isn't it? It's great, it's great, great stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, building that, building that, building that. So, Jenny, you you were going to talk about um, a coding app smash, is that right? Well, um, we do do a bit of uh, app smashing with coding, but it's nothing as as fancy as that. It's pretty basic, really. Um, so, in an app like. Um, this one, can you see if I hold my screen? This this app, yeah. Which is CargoBot. You know CargoBot. Yeah. Yep. So um, when when you're working in CargoBot, um, we'll get our students to take screenshots of different parts that they're up to, and then when they get the solution and it saves the video to their camera roll, we'll get them to put that as well as their screenshots into various different apps and then add more value to it. And they might put some of the stills into Comic Life and add some um, little text bubbles explaining what they were doing in that section. And then once they've finished all the different parts, they'll put it into Book Creator, and this will be their book about their um, solution to the to the problem. So each problem will have a front cover with the goal that they had, a starting goal and the end goal. And then each different page will have those different parts to it. Plus they'll add audio, of course, on each page. What I'm finding with apps though are, um, I think we really started off doing crazy amounts of app smashing because apps were so limited and could only do this or that. But I'm finding now like, say with Book Creator for instance, you can draw in Book Creator now, you can take film in Book Creator now and the things you couldn't do, you used to have to do and then bring them in whereas now you can open the app and do it all in there. So. Um, you know, if we've got an iPad one, <laughs> we'll do a whole lot of workarounds so that person can do all these things. But because the apps are getting so clever, um, some of our app smashing is really not needed as much as it used to, which is nice uh, to be able to do. But we're still at wanting to add value to things and not just put a, a single thing in that hasn't really been um, made better and, and added more feeling towards it, added, added more emotion towards it. And, and adding more explanation to people who are looking at it by using these various different um, app smashing ways of doing things. And kids will work out things that we have never thought of, which is always great to see. So, um, you know, I used to have um, little laminated pictures for all the different apps and we'd have students suggest different different app smashes that they might do, except we don't actually call them app smashes, we just call them workflows. And um, which which our workflow would you suggest would be great to do this? And they'll come up and move the apps all around in different orders. Another one will come up and change them in different orders. And uh, now they just go off and do it, and and work out what they're doing and and have a different workflow. So that's how their learning flows hmm. through the through the different apps. Hmm. Yeah, I I really love Book Creator. It, it's an app which has just grown and grown and grown and grown as time has moved on. Really. Um, you know, it's such a great wrapper for, for showcasing lots of different types of work as well, isn't it? You can, you can bring yeah, it's like the whole, isn't it? Into it, can't you? It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah, and, and then send it off to iTunes into the bookstore. Yeah, absolutely. And, and have have people download the book, and and the kids, you know, really get a buzz out of that. It's like the next level of buzziness if you can get a next level of buzziness. Um, but you know, having their book in the iTunes bookstore and and having parents and aunties and uncles and grandmas and everyone downloading their book. It's it's really terrific. Yeah, it's really empowering, isn't it? That and that's the whole yeah. idea of the exhibition with project based learning, isn't it? You know, where you've got a real authentic audience and it gives students such a real sense of agency when you're putting the work out there and they know it's really real. Rather than just being, 
you know, you as teacher and maybe mum you know, reading something or looking on their iPad or looking in their book at their work. You know, you've got a potential global audience and it's just it's just massive and, and you know, students and pupils, you know, in my experience, you know, find that a bit scary, but you know, really, really empowering and makes them actually want to be really proud of their work. Yeah, and and you know, I've still got teachers who will put up displays in their classroom of, of handwritten work that you can't read unless you're climbing up onto tables and a chair and up there seeing you can't even read it and they'll spend hours putting this up and I'll say now who's going to see this <laughs> and, you know if that was on your blog for your class you know so many thousands more people would see it I mean you only need two more people to see it and you'd have more than up two chairs on a table up on the wall somewhere but um, I think another thing to really consider in the in the app smashing though is when you get into the sharing part and, and how you do want to share it because that will put a different spin on your app smashing where you want it to end up and how you want to end up to um, have it to share like you know whether it is a QR code or whether it's a trigger in your asthma or, or, or whether it's just in Google Docs and share uh, or in Dropbox something like that so um, considering how you're going to share it and who you're going to share it with and whether those people have access because um, we have done a few QR codes from our Google account, but because we have Google Apps for Education, you know, we got caught by things not being able to be shared with people who weren't in our domain for Google Apps for Education and things. So in the admin section of Google Apps for Education, there are some places where you have to turn on sharing. And if you actually go into videos in there, you can share, turn that on so that people who aren't in the domain can have access to see that then the QR codes work. But it takes you a while to get there because you turn it on everywhere else and it still doesn't work or you're greyed out and it won't let you turn it on to, to share it. <coughs> so Excuse me. We find these, these little problems as we're trying things, don't we? That's it. It's all a learning process. And I mean, I, I still find that I learn new things every single day. And, and thank mm, you for yeah. sharing your thoughts, uh, Jenny, and thank you to um, Richard as well for sharing his App Smash, and um, if I wave a little bit, maybe Joe. I think you you might be listening on YouTube now. Um, thank you uh, for your input as well, Joe. Um, just to recap, then, so um, Richard did a, a, a lovely presentation, uh, and Richard, can you remind us where we can find information about that, please? I'll um, I'll tweet the link. Um, I'll uh, I haven't actually shared it yet, so I'll have to uh, tweet the link to the uh, thing. But the uh, but on my blog iPadforschools.org, uh, you'll find all the help sheets on using Erasmus and, and and how I use all these apps anyway. So, um, so yeah, so just go to my blog and, and search for the uh, for the app that you want help with. Brilliant. I noticed on Twitter while we've been talking, uh, somebody was asking for a, a list of all the apps we've used uh, and, and what have you. So maybe if we could um, collate some of those. Um, and uh, put them together. If I create a Google Doc or something, we share it between the four of us, and then we can yep. then um, sort of tweet it out and, and put it on Google Plus and what have you. Uh, Jenny, thank you uh, to you as well. Um, you didn't introduce yourself. Where are you? Where are you exactly, Jenny? Um, I'm in Bendigo, Victoria, Australia, um, so, and it's a nice summer evening. <clears throat> it's not so warm here. I was out in the car last night, minus four. It was, uh, and it took a good sort of twenty minutes to de-ice the car. So um, it's a bit nippy, <laughs> shall we say today? Um, but uh, yeah, really um, international. We've got um, Richard in New Zealand, yourself in Australia, Joe. Um, he's kind of foreign. He's uh, he's on the Isle of Wight, <laughs> um, and um, I, I'm I'm here in, in uh, sunny Britain. Um, of course, uh, Joe's in Britain as well. Um, Joe, um, do you want to remind us where people can find you? He's nodding. He's listening to YouTube. He, he might catch up in a second. I, th I think he is the Isle of Wight. He is the Isle of Wight, yeah. 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 Uh, so, yeah, you can find Joe on Twitter then, at Joe Dale. Um, and uh, if you look on the hashtag MFL Twitterati, uh, you'll find him putting loads of links and, and what have you on there as well. Uh, Jenny, you're at JJ Ash on Twitter, is that correct? Yes, JJ Ash on Twitter. Okay, yes. and um, I'm Mark Anderson, and you can find me uh, on at ICT Evangelist. On my blog uh, uh, is ictevangelist.com. Thanks again, guys, for for joining me for another App Smash uh, live. 
Um, can I wish you all um, a belated very Merry Christmas and uh, a brilliant... Uh, yeah, um, if, if you can hear me... Oh, yeah, if you can hear me, okay. Now, I think there's a slight... Yeah, there, there is a slight... There's delay. a slight um, delay between listening on YouTube and, uh, and, uh, and watching on my, on my screen here. Yeah. So he now knows that I'm just talking and carrying on talking. So I'll just uh, wrap up and just say um, thank you all again for, for joining me for App Smash Live. Uh, and um, everyone who's been viewing, we've got 12 viewers at the moment. Um, I know there's lots, been lots of sort of interaction on Twitter and things as well. Thank you to all of you and uh, wishing you a very happy new year and uh, an awesome uh, 2015. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.